Okay, I just want to say it wasn't easy and it's still not easy. <laughs> but okay. if you switch to rowing, trust me, everything is easy. Yeah. Uh, rowing is very, it's, it's such a mentally tough sport. Hello and welcome to the May Man Show. We are coming to you from Arena Fitness Innovation Gym in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have a Olympic sprinter and now rower for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Karaman Abu Jadaid. Thank you very much for finding the time while you're <laughs> training to come and do this episode with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Oh, it's not a problem. I mean, I mean, we, we had to come to you to, 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 to record this episode, but it's all good. <laughs> I'm very happy. You know, you know the backstory. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, all right. So let's, let, 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 let's start with, with um, your last trip. <laughs> and, uh, well, we won't get into what, what, what made you um, delay coming back to Riyadh. But you recently donated um, your Rio 2000. 16 Olympic uh, running outfit to the Olympics Museum. How did this opportunity present itself? And just give us uh, an overview of it, please. Um, so, yeah, I was invited by the uh, Olympic Museum to donate my outfit uh, and to have it dis display at the Olympic Museum in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, uh, and also uh, go and visit the um, IUC, International Olympic Committee headquarters, um, called the Olympic House, and sign the Olympi Olympians' wall. They have like a big Olymp wall of Olympians where uh, you have to sign it, but you have to be an Olympian, of course, and uh, sign that wall. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, once once I heard that, I said, of course, I'll accept that invitation. And uh, okay, to to accept that the, the uh, invitation, but to go to go there actually, to go to that museum and to see my um, my outfit and display is uh, is a feeling I can't put into words. To be honest, it's just it felt like. I was part of a bigger narrative, the narrative of the Olympians. Uh, you can you can not, not only see my outfit, you can see the outfits of everyone, all of the heroes, the legends that you've seen on TV. You've, you can see them in that museum, and, and mm -hmm. to be part of that uh, story is I, I I don't think I can put it into words. Honestly, it's just it feel it. I'm just honored, honored to okay. uh, to donate and, my outfit. And and uh, your outfit is in display next to what? Prominent names that you're proud of? Um, it was in the section of the um, uh, uh, Olympians like Usain Bolt, uh, Yusra Mardini, um, and other fellow uh, athletes from, um, you know, from different sports. Um, and the museum itself, honestly, not because I'm, uh, I'm an Olympian, it's so great, yeah. so interactive. <laughs> Just, I never, not in a single second, I felt bored going to that museum. And honestly, after my visit, uh, I, I had to go back uh, training in London uh, the next day. Uh, but I had just a few hours before travel, uh, before going to the airport, and I actually went to the museum museum again. I just wanted to see it again. It's amazing, and I urge everyone who's close and who's in Switzerland just pass by Lausanne and not to see my outfit, but <laughs> to check it out. It's okay. amazing. It's really amazing. All right. Well, they should go to check out your outfit and and, and check sure. out the whole museum sure. as a whole. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay. And uh, you know, aside from. 2016 Olympics. You're currently training to qualify for the 224 Olympics. Um, can you give us a quick overview of your, you know, your current training routine? What what do you usually do? So, um, in Rio 2016, I went there as a sprinter, a uh, hundred meter sprinter. Now, uh, right now, I'm um, I'm a rower, so. Uh, rowing in general, the, it's the common distance of 2,000 meters. So it's a huge difference between 100 meters and 2,000 meters in terms of training. Um, and rowing, uh, you have to put in a lot of hours in the day to train. Um, so, for example, I'll give you just an overview of my day. Um, you, you, you need to wake up early in the morning. Okay. Why? Because, the water, uh, because of the water. You know, um, in the morning, the wind, wind usually are, is not, uh, uh, it's very low. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to look at that. Uh, but if you go to the afternoon, uh, for instance, or late afternoon, the, the wind picks up. So training, training happens in the morning. So usually you wake up at 5, 6 a.m. and you have a 7 to 8 a.m. Uh, practice. 
That's practice number one. You usually uh, train for 12 to 16 kilometers on the water. All right. Uh, take one hour break and do it all over again, twice a day. That's the minimum. Uh, most days we do a third session in the late afternoon. That's usually on the, in the gym, right? Like this place here uh, on the rowing machine. Um, so in total, we, we do three sessions a day um, for six to seven days a week. Okay. And uh, so you, you were the uh, first female sprinter, correct? Yes. For the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yes, correct. And uh, now you're training to be a rower. You're part of the Saudi Arabian rowing team. Yes. Um, so what were the major challenges that you faced, you know, switching from being a sprinter or a runner to rowing? Um, as I said, it's a distance. So, you know, I'm not going to bore you with the details. 100 meters, you need to be fast and explosive and very strong. You don't, and in, in rowing, it's 2,000 meters. So you, you can only be strong and explosive, but you have to be even fit, meaning you have to have, uh, you, you need to have good endurance to withstand a race that will be for seven to eight minutes. So that's a long race, and you have to have so much hours of training. And uh, so, yeah, in general, it's just the, the challenge, challenging part is the distance. Um, and it's very hard mentally. Honestly, rowing is, they're both hard. Like, it's hard to be a sprinter, and it's hard to be a rower. But uh, in rowing, it's very mental. I would say it's extremely mental. A uh, big part of it, it's just at one point in the, <laughs> actually, in many points in the race, you just give up. It's just too hard. Especially yeah. on the water, you know, you have to deal with the wind and you have to deal with just water, uh, uh, the conditions. And sometimes it's cold and water splashes in your face and uh, just uh, the blades. It's just so many aspects that you have to uh, focus on when racing. Well, as in uh, sprinting, it's just a straight line. Just go okay. <laughs> a few seconds and uh, be as explosive as you can and that's it. So in rowing, it's, it's harder, definitely harder. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's basically the major, one of the differences between sprinting and rowing. Okay. And, uh, you make sprinting sound like it's, it's easy. So let me <laughs> take you back to Rio 2016 and you were representing the kingdom of Saudi Arabia yeah. at an international stage. You were also the first female to do it. So I'm sure at that time it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. All time. right. Okay. So. What do you recall from that experience? What stands out? What is something that no matter what happens, you'll remember? Okay, I just want to say it wasn't easy and it's still not easy. <laughs> but okay. If you switch to rowing, trust me, everything is easy. Yeah. Uh, rowing is very, it's, it's such a mentally tough sport. Uh, but back then in 2016, um, I think every moment was great. You know, it's the Olympic experience for the first time, but I. I remember one uh, thing that stood out the most, or one memory, is uh, the opening ceremony. When they called out Saudi Arabia's name, and then we were walking down the opening ceremony, and we were in the Maracana Stadium in Rio de Janeiro, uh, the famous football stadium, and it was packed. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't know, it's just so many people that, you know, it, it's just, it felt so quiet. It's just, I was walking down and such a great moment, um, but I looked at the jumbo, uh, jumbo screen at the uh, stadium, and I saw myself. Suddenly, I saw myself, and I was like, wow, what a moment. Yeah. Of, uh, at that moment, I, I, I officially felt that I'm actually an Olympian. Okay, Offic you officially made it as an Olympian. It was a great, such a great moment for me, and, uh, and I actually waved at myself. I don't know why, but I, I was just so happy. <laughs> so okay. that moment... Yeah, that was that was the moment that stood out for me the most. And of course, the race and everything else. But you know, every every moment you experience in the Olympics is mm -hmm. surreal, to be honest. <laughs> All right. I mean, the closest thing I can you know relate to that is I I was on TV for the opening ceremony for the Islamic Solidarity Games. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I saw my, yes, and I saw myself with Team Saudi. So that I got a, <laughs> I got a thrill out of that, even though I wasn't part. You know, I was part of the, the, you know, the marketing team and not the athletes, but it's all good. Um, so aside from being an athlete, you are currently an advisor for the sports sector in NEOM. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the sports sector in NEOM and your role as an advisor for the sports sector? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, it's a great experience because, you know, as an athlete, you're always at the forefront. You never see what's going on, going on behind the scenes. 
uh, and to get to experience that actually, and to be part of the planning team and, um, you know, and uh, to trying to develop a world-class sporting uh, ecosystem is really great. And I, I honestly, what I can say is with the infrastructure and the inv investment in sports in Neum, I would definitely say it will propel our athletes to new heights, definitely. And they, it will contribute to the growth and success of Saudi athletes, not only on a national stage, but inshallah, on an international stage. All right. And uh, in what ways do you use your current position to empower other Saudi aspiring female athletes or current athletes? Okay, so do you know the uh, commercial of Michael Jordan in the 90s? Yeah. Like Mike, the Gatorade commercial. Yeah, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, the, everyone wanted to be like Mike, Michael Jordan. Why? Yeah. Because he's a symbol of, you know, commitment. Success, uh, excellence. Everyone wanted to be like him. So I think your role already is, if you're an athlete, your role is to, you already have a role uh, and it's to inspire the new generation by just be, you know, being successful. Um, okay. If you're successful and if you're good at what you do and if you, you know, became an Olympian, everyone aspires to be like that. Okay. And uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna, I want to be like uh, Mike. I'm just right. saying, every, no. if you're successful, people will follow. People will imitate. Okay. And um, you know the role that you play as a as a female uh, in Saudi Arabia as a female athlete is just be successful to inspire the next generation. And and to do that, I think to do that is just trying to be uh, as good as I can as an athlete. Okay. Um, and also, of course, as a human. But uh, yeah. All right. So your tagline wouldn't be "I want to be like Mike." Yours would be "If Harry Man can, you can." <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah that's, I, I just made that up on the spot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> on the spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so excuse me if it's kind of cheesy, but it, you know it kind of works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, so tell us a little about the Saudi Rowing Federation because you're currently with the Saudi Rowing Federation yeah. as an athlete. Yeah, yeah. Saudi Rowing Federation. Um, what a story. Um, so. When I first start, started uh, running, uh, I was at the track and field team at Northeastern University in Boston. Um, at that time, of course, there was no Saudi female sprinter. Yeah. But there was a federation, a very successful federation, actually. Um, athletes, uh, Saudi athletes winning um, Olympic medals even at that time. Mm -hmm. So it just it wasn't, hard, it wasn't hard to be part of the federation because it's already been established. But... Um, and I would just like to thank, uh, of course, the pre uh, president of the Saudi uh, Olympic Committee and Vice President uh, Prince Abdul Aziz and uh, Prince Fahad, because we just came, came to them with this crazy idea that we need a, a rowing federation and we're just a few, but of course we're going to win everything, we're going to win the medals, we're going yeah. to have a Saudi national team and we're going to, you know, we're going to grow. And... You know, the moment they saw that the, there are athletes that are serious in training, serious in training, and I, they said, okay, uh, the Saudi Rowing Federation got established in 2019. Okay. And I remember it was just so new. Even the, the logo, actually, this is the logo right here, and this is the logo yeah. right there. I remember designing it. I like it. the logo. It's actually, nice. I designed it. Thank you. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. With okay. the help of uh, one of the uh, rowers, uh, his name is Muhammad. We actually got together and said, listen, we need What's to their full name? Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Hadrawi. Okay. Uh, and we got together and said, look, we need to create a very strong logo. And I said, the first thing came up to my mind is the shield. Because we're, okay. you know, we're representing Saudi. So it's just, even from the logo, we started uh, designing the logo. And then, you know, and then we had this office. And then, you know, we had the team. And I remember there were no staff at the, at the beginning that we had to go to the Asian uh, rowing championships. And there was n no one, you know, to... Um, communicate or to handle the log logistics and i said okay you know what i'll do that okay. <laughs> so I, I handled the logistics the accommodation everything and uh with the and uh, you're an athlete in the rowing yeah training at the same time okay, that's yeah awesome. okay. and the asian rowing championships were, uh, was in uh, korea and i remember when I, we went to korea and they said okay where is kariman I said, i'm kariman and they said wait no you're an athlete I said, yeah. okay like I was the one organizing everything and they said wow okay that's nice okay so I remember from that time it was really a young federation and uh, but uh, alhamdulillah 
now this year, the Saudi Rowing Federation actually is now considered the top performed federation among all Saudi Federation, right? Uh, 2023. So, okay. and you have no one, not two, not three, but many, many athletes. Now you have divisions, uh, under 23s, uh, juniors. Wow. Uh, when we first started, we didn't have a place to row in Saudi. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember the first time, the first place we, we opened the first rowing facility, it was in Jubel uh, in 2021, I think. And, uh, and then we opened one in uh, Jeddah and hopefully soon we're going to open uh, another one in Riyadh. So it's okay. a big federation now and it's a very, alhamdulillah, it's a very successful federation. Um, and uh, it's just a nice, uh, it's, I didn't think really it's, uh, it will be that, like, you know, when you think about it in the beginning, you're like, how can I establish a sport in Saudi? But, you know, okay. when there's a will, there's a way. So just happy yeah. with the progress uh, of all the team, all of my teammates, all of the coaches, everyone, the uh, presidents and, uh, you know, and the board. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it's going to be successful even more in the future. Okay. Have you seen the movie Cool Runnings? What is it? Cool Runnings? So Cool Runnings is a comedy, yeah. but it's actually about real events okay. about Jamaicans who wanted to start a bobsled team. Oh, yeah, I saw that And movie. they competed in the, the Winter movie. Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if, if, they, if there was a will for a couple of Jamaicans to start a bobsled team. There we team, go. <laughs> then you can start any sport, I Have think. you seen Eddie the Eagle? Yeah. I, I saw that on my plane going to Rio. Okay. Maybe it's the same. Uh, nah, is it the same story? It's the uh, same idea, right? Kind of, maybe, yeah, kind of the same idea. But, like, you know, Cool Runnings was, was more of comedy and, That's what, and it was, stuff like yeah. that. You know? In a way, Eddie the Eagle is as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, so you, you're, you're, you're not the only um, athlete in the family. You have yeah. athletic siblings <laughs> as well. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, so um, who, who, who basically supported you? in your beginnings oh. who instilled this will to be an athlete for you and for your sisters as well uh, my mother yeah yeah my mother uh she's a writer and a journalist uh okay yeah she she's of course i i have no words honestly to describe um the, the level of support that she gives us because and i remember the when i told her mom i want to go to the olympics i don't think she heard that i want to go to the olympics she heard that I want to uh, I want to chase uh, ch chase my dream. That's okay. what she heard, um, and she said, yeah, "Go ahead, I'll support you. I'll support you, support you because she knows that I love sports." And um, yeah, she said, "I'll support you no matter the outcome." And in sports, um, everyone thinks that it's easy, but you give so much of your time. You get you you sacrifice a lot. Yeah, um, it's a lifestyle. It's not like a hobby. You exactly, know? but it promises you not, nothing. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, will, it will not promise you, oh, you're going to be an Olympian at the end of the day. You might not. Mm -hmm. So is it, the idea is, okay, when I was in Boston, I mean, I can, you know, focus on my studies and just, uh, you know, go back. If, you know, to be, in, to be a, an athlete, you know, you need to sacrifice so much of your time, so much of your weekend, your, 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 your vacations, your holidays. Yeah. And is it worth it? Because I don't know if I'm going to be an Olympian in the end. Mm -hmm. But honestly... You know, I made that decision because I said, "Well, if I make make it, uh, if I make, uh, make um, if I make it to the Olympics, great. If not, then I'd be really I would have a clear conscience because you tried. At I least. tried. That's yeah. it. I would not say what if, mm -hmm. and in the future, yes. I tried. It didn't happen, but Alhamdulillah, it did. So, okay. but if it didn't, then it's worth the try. It's always yes. worth the try to chase your dream. Yeah, I mean, win, lose, you know, or you know, either or, it's yeah. the, the fact that you tried yeah. puts you in a position that's different than the position is, you know, saying what if, because what if, what if so is okay. a feeling that festers inside, right? Exactly. True. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, before we wrap up this interview, uh, I want, uh, um, you know, just to highlight to everybody as well, you're not just an athlete, you're an architect as well, right? <laughs> okay. So athlete, architect, what personal message do you want to give to the May Man Show audience and Arab News who are watching and listening or reading? A lot, honestly. Um, I would say uh, failure is not you losing. Failure is you uh, stop trying. Okay. So try again. 
and again and again and again um you know it it was it, it nothing worth having comes easy yeah so try again that's that's my message okay and uh, it's okay to uh, to lose uh, you're not a loser if you lose you're a loser if you quit okay um and i always say it's not, it's it's not win or lose it's win or learn all right so learn from your uh, losses learn from your mistakes and yeah, and inshallah, inshallah, you'll make it. Uh, they say there's no guarantee to success, but I think I think if you try again and again and again and again, I, get, I guarantee you, you one day you will yeah. succeed. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. Exactly. <laughs> of course, right? You're bound to get it, right? Yeah. Some, sometime. <laughs> at one point, you're trying so much, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Well, uh, we can sit and do this all, all yeah. night long, but I know you have a flight to catch <laughs> and you still have some more training to do. Yeah. And it was it was nice enough for you to take time from your busy schedule preparing for the 2024 Olympics to, to be on the show. Thank you. And uh, on that note, tune in to our next episode of The Mayman Show. See you later. Mm -hmm.